Okay, good afternoon again, everyone. This is Hurricane Specialist Robbie Burke from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, we've migrated across the border here from the Hurricane Center to the other side of the building, uh, which houses the National Weather Service uh, Miami South Florida Weather Forecast Office. And we're going to talk to uh, Warning Coordination Meteorologist Rob Moeda, who's going to give us kind of give us a run through of how the operations of the Weather Forecast Office works. Uh, the Miami office is one of 122 uh, National Weather Service uh, local forecast offices. Um, so, but they're pretty much all about the same, and he's going to give us a rundown of the operations. So, uh, welcome, Rob, uh, to the first day of the official first day of the hurricane season, uh, and give us a, give us a rundown of what you guys do over here. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Robbie mentioned, this is the uh, forecast office for Miami and all of South Florida, as one of the 122 local for local forecast offices across the country. Our main responsibility is uh, to forecast. Uh, we issue forecasts and warnings for our local area 24 seven. So we, we work shifts year round. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, no matter the weather, rain or shine. We're here to provide both the routine forecasts as well as uh, warnings for high impact weather events, such as uh, severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, flooding, and of course, hurricanes. Uh, if we can walk around here, I'll kind of give you, we'll give you a, an idea of uh, the forecasters uh, and well, what their duties are on a, on a typical day like today. We really don't have a whole lot going on as far as bad weather is concerned. Uh, this is the uh, forecast desk where we do our routine forecast. So this is uh, Stephen Kanarik, one of our lead forecasters. He's uh, preparing the, uh, the forecast and we do our forecast uh, using a digital forecast database. So in other words, all of our forecasts are are done digitally for example of uh, the forecast uh, high temperatures for example are done see there on that map where we have the temperatures there displayed and then th that information is what eventually gets translated to the text forecast that you may read on the internet or receive on your app or here on on NOAA with the radio for example so that's so we do this uh as part of our normal process of uh, you know, part of our shift we bring in a combination of computer model data, I'm sorry, computer model data, and also weather observations from across the area. So we kind of bring all that data in, and then the forecaster will make adjustments to that data, to the information, and that's how we put out our seven day forecasts. So we do the public forecasts, we do marine forecasts, and we also do fire weather forecasts on a routine basis several times a day. Uh, we go over here to this side, we have Tony Rainis another one of our senior forecasters and he's working uh, the desk that's uh, handling the aviation forecasts so we do uh, 20 aviation forecasts for the major airports in south florida as well as uh, the other offices do them for the, the airports in their areas and also on a day like today uh, where we have we have a few showers developing in our area tony is responsible for uh, monitoring our the data from our weather radars and issuing any appropriate statements or even warnings if we need to. And of course, those can pop up at any time. Uh, we also would be able to handle any uh, spot forecast requests that we get from uh, from fire uh, agencies that are out there. You know, folks, if they're doing any kind of burning, uh, they'll contact us to get a spot forecast for that area. Walk over here. Uh, this is Andrew Hagen. He's one of our meteorologists, and he. He's working the desk that does the, uh, well, one of the main duties that, that they do the weather balloon launches twice a day. We're one of the, uh, about, I guess, close to 90 sites across the country that do uh, weather balloons. We launch weather balloons twice a day at uh, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. local time here, Eastern time. And that's, of course, very important data. That data gets goes to the computer models, which, of course, help us to do our forecasts. When we have hurricanes nearby, or relatively nearby, just for example, what we had with, with the subtropical storm Alberto last week, we actually did uh, balloon launches every six hours. So we did four a day, and that was here and actually most of the southeast United States, uh, and even Texas, they were doing the, those six hour weather balloons. That's an important part of our job here. Andrew also uh, does a data, data analysis and quality control he sends out the uh, high, high and low temperature and precipitation tables and also will assist with social media. We put a lot of, do a lot of weather postings on social media, especially when there is a lot of weather going on. We'll certainly ramp up that, uh, you know, the, the amount of posts that we put. So Andrew's uh, one of the ones that will do that, uh, you know, as, you know, as the situation warrants. So this is a pretty routine day here, uh, here in the National Weather Service, but 
when we have uh, hurricanes or any tropical system threatening or affecting our area, uh, we really we certainly ramp up our duties here quite a bit. So we will add, you know, we three people on right now. We'll we'll multiply that by at least three. We'll have seven, eight, or even nine people here, all doing certain roles. You know that 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 could be handling the routine forecast, which are still important during that time, but also uh, increasing our social media posts monitoring and gathering information from our media and emergency management partners, uh, watching the radar, especially when those rain bands start moving onshore. And then also very importantly, we do briefings with our local officials and media partners several times a day. So we do those from here, and actually well, I'm gonna show you the room where we, where we do a lot of, most of our briefings from. We have a, a, a a separated area here within our operations room where we do uh, briefings for our emergency managers and local officials and we also can do Skype in interviews here uh, we can we have a camera set up there where we can do live interviews via Skype we can even bring cameras in there to do recorded interviews so it's a really nice way to you know stay within the operation uh, the operations area of you know, of the office, but at the same time, get get the information out to our partners on a, on a timely basis. Great, thanks, Rob. So yeah, that's a really good overview of the operations of the Weather Service Forecast Office. Like I said, there's 122 around the country. Uh, we actually work with the, uh, the offices all along the coast, from Brownsville, Texas, all the way up to Caribou, Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's an actual hurricane event. Um, it's easy for us to walk over and talk to you guys personally, but in the other cases where we can't, we have a hurricane hotline where the hurricane specialists will get on and talk to uh, the forecast offices all along the coast or even inland that may be affected by that storm. In fact, I see your hotline sitting over there. That's right. But we could go take a look yeah, at it. Sure. It's actually new yeah, this year. Let's go take a look at it. Yeah. it used to be that we would use this old phone. Yeah, in fact, we'll show it to you right here. Yeah, it's not on right now, but basically, yeah, this is what uh, uh, we would use, as Robbie yeah. said, if we have a call, you know, when, when the call comes in, instead of picking up an old phone, it just, you know, we can actually see everyone that's on the call and the yeah. audio quality is much better. Yeah, so we used really to use a phone that looked like this, yeah. very archaic looking old. Uh, the, the phone lines really weren't supported very well anymore. So we have definitely upgraded. Now we're able to actually see each other, which maybe isn't the best thing on a midnight shift, but uh, you get the picture. So it's, it's definitely, I think, gonna help us to do the coordination during these hurricane events. So with that, uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, Thanks to Rob for giving us a tour of the Weather Service Forecast Office here in Miami. Um, I'll sign off for here uh, for now, and I'll be back in about half an hour. We'll wrap things up for the day uh, about 3 o'clock uh, to kind of wrap up for the first day of the official start of the hurricane season. We'll talk to you then.